Good morning, this is Shelby Law with the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Wednesday, July 12th, 2023. Yesterday was a pretty quiet day across the Great Basin, but we did see a little um, cluster of thunderstorms down in southern and southeast Utah. Um, some of these storms did produce a little bit of precip, uh, but really not too much, otherwise dry across the area. Light initial attack activity was observed yesterday with just a handful of fires uh, with the very low acreage. Precipitation for the past 14 days is shown here uh, with the amount on the left and the percent of normal on the right. It's been a pretty dry couple of weeks, especially for the first part of July across the southern Great Basin um, due to the fact that the monsoons are delayed and have not arrived in the basin. So it's been quite dry. Here are the current fire danger values for a few zones. Um, looking at ERC here for the Payette, those values are right around average for the time of year um, and have been increasing quite rapidly over the past uh, week to 10 days. Same story across the south here, um, central Utah, west central Utah. Those values have just popped above normal for the time of year with this extended warm dry period. We expect to see those, continue, those values to continue to rise with the warm and dry air mass um, that's in place and will be in place for a little while. This morning satellite imagery continues to show the center of the high pressure located to the south and east over, over um, the southwest and, and Texas area where the hottest temperatures are located. Um, but this high will start to move a little bit towards the weekend um, closer to the Great Basin bringing some very hot temperatures to the area. And then there's a low um, up here over the Pacific Northwest. So again, for today, uh, very dry conditions across the Great Basin, warm temperatures. Um, the winds have lightened up a bit from what we've seen over the past few days, so we don't have any high risk for winds today. Um, really just hot, dry, hot and dry. That's what we're looking for. So for this afternoon, we still will see some breezy conditions across the southern Great Basin and along the Sierra front here, uh, but below criteria for our high risk triggers. Minimum relative humidities are quite low in the single digits across much of Nevada and the lower elevations of Utah. More of the same is expected on Thursday, still uh, hot and dry across the Great Basin. Uh, temperatures are going to be in the mid-90s and climbing across many of the northern valleys. Um, on Thursday, the winds lighten up across the south, but we do see some winds pick up over central and eastern uh, Idaho and western Wyoming. On Friday, the high pressure center begins to move westward um, across the southwest into, into parts of southern California. This will really cause an increase in temperatures across the Great Basin heading into the weekend. And that's the big story is the heat building in for, for the weekend and into early next week. No high risk triggers are issued at this time for Friday. Um, so again, temperatures on Friday up to 100 degrees near Reno, um, 111 down south or, or right around there. Um, not quite as hot in the north and west, but the heat will be building in over the weekend. Minimum relative humidities, of course, stay very low. Three-day precip totals are showing a big old goose egg. Not any precip moving into the Great Basin for the next three days. On Saturday, that high pressure ridge moves into the Great Basin or overhead um, over the Great Basin for an increase in temperatures region-wide. Um, Near record temperatures are expected as we head into this weekend. Um, near Reno, the temperatures could be 103, 104, um, very hot for the time of year. And on Sunday, the ridge remains in place over the Great Basin, bringing hot temperatures a little bit further eastward uh, over Utah, again with, with triple digit heat into Salt Lake um, and, and areas northward. And that heat sticks around for Monday as well. Um, the big change for Monday is we see some moisture wrapping around that high pressure system um, and, and kind of interacting with this low over the Pacific Northwest. So we do expect to see some increased thunderstorm activity on Monday. Um, this is mainly going to be across central Nevada and, and maybe portions of northern Utah up into Idaho possibly. So we'll be keeping an eye on that, but definitely looking, looking for an increase in some thunderstorm activity um, in month starting on Monday and then some of those thunderstorms will linger into Tuesday as that little band of moisture makes its way south and east. 
We don't have any high risk triggers for this event just yet, um, but as it gets closer, we, we probably will put some in, especially on the heels of such a hot and dry um, period of time. Those the, the fuels are going to be drying out and um, should be receptive to lightning. Seven day precip totals, again, showing that little band of moisture coming in Monday, Tuesday um, for that increase in thunderstorm activity during that time period. The extended outlook for July 20, 19th through the 25th, um, still putting the, the, the bullseye of heat over the south, over the southern part of the country, but still very warm over the Great Basin. And then below normal precipitation for the northern and western portions of the area. Um, we will we will start to see some monsoon moisture make its way into the, f the far southern and southeast portions of the Great Basin, mainly looking like Utah and far southern Nevada at this time as we head into the last little bit of July. Um, confidence is still not great as to how much precipitation we, we will get, but we are pretty confident that we will see an increase in lightning activity heading into the first week to ten or the last week or so of uh July. And this concludes today's fire potential briefing. Please check back tomorrow for the latest updates.